the importance of mainstreaming climate risk management. Climate change is already affecting food security. From climate hazards already present in global supply chains are likely to intensify and become more frequent over the next few decades. The assessment and management of climate risks requires taking all climate related threats into account. From rapid onset events such as floods, storms, landslides to slow onset events such as droughts and heat waves and the persistent occurrence of events such as soil erosion, degradation of coastal erosion. An important step towards adaptation to climate change is reducing vulnerability and exposure. To present climate variability, this requires accounting for persistent risk drivers such as poverty, gender inequality, demographic pressures, unplanned urbanization, and weak governance. Managing climate and disaster risks and conflict and displacement situations becomes particularly important to prevent the exacerbation of vulnerabilities. The climate risk screening process. The risk screening process first determines the hazards at a given project location, including short and long-term weather, climatological and hydrological events that may impact or alter different agricultural systems. Second, it identifies the exposure of the social ecological systems, meaning the physical exposure of livelihoods, ecosystems, assets, and population for forthcoming climate change and climate variability. Third, the vulnerability is assessed, meaning the degree to which a system is susceptible to and unable to cope with the adverse effects of climate change, including climate variability and extremes. The latter, accumulated with risks such as hazard, exposure, and vulnerability are modulated by the adaptive capacity, which relates to the ability of a system to adjust to climate change, including climate variability and extremes, impacts, and the capacity to cope with and overcome impacts. Now let's talk a little bit about hazard. The best available climate data from the IPCC AR6 report has been used in the climate risk toolbox. For hazards, a total of 33 layers from different time horizons have been included. First is the baseline from 1981 to 2010. Then we have the hazard in the near term from 2021 to 2040, as well as the midterm 2041 to 2060. And climate change scenarios, the RCP 2.6 low emission scenario and the RCP 8.5 high emission scenario. In this case, we can see the areas with extreme precipitation, areas where the change in the average maximum one day precipitation is above 20%. In the near term for the high emission scenario, the increase in heavy precipitation events along the Sahel region is of increasing concern given the region's existing vulnerability to climate change impacts. A total of nine layers have been used to compute the exposure of livelihoods, asset and population to climate change. In this case, the crop cover areas where crop cover is above 30% are represented in green colors. Vulnerability. A total of nine layers makes up the susceptibility of a system to climate change. Social and economic indicators have been used to better understand the spatial vulnerability of climate change. For example, here we are seeing areas where the human development index is below 0.6 represented in red and therefore are likely to be adversely affected by changing climate conditions. Vulnerability, accounting for the gender dimensions of vulnerability is crucial to develop gender responsive programs and projects. Women generally have lower access to and control over resources and services and fewer opportunities than men. In this gender inequalities layer, the areas in red represent where women's vulnerability is likely to worsen with future climate impacts. Adaptive capacity. A total of eight layers have been used to help identify the adaptive capacity and resilience of different socioeconomic groups to changing climate conditions using FAO datasets. Here we will see in green the agriculture economic expenditure, which is the share of total governments in agriculture, fisheries, and forestry. 
calculation of risk. The final calculation of risk follows IPCC guidelines. First, each component of risk, hazard, exposure, vulnerability, is computed individually. The accumulated risk is obtained by summing the different components. Lastly, the adaptive capacity is subtracted from the previous accumulated risk to obtain the overall climate risk modulated by adaptive capacity. For future climate risks, hazards into the future are added into the baseline calculation of overall climate risk. Cumulative hazard. All the hazard layers have been overlaid to observe cumulative hazard in this example. As we can see from the baseline 1981-2010 map, Myanmar is a hotspot of meteorological hazards such as extreme temperatures, hydrological hazards such as extreme precipitation, and climatological hazards such as drought. For example, in 2008, Cyclone Najis was one of the most devastating natural disasters ever recorded with over 130,000 casualties. Overall climate risk. Once all the components of climate risk are grouped in a weighted sum, both for the present and into the future, the overall climate risk is obtained.